So the president of NUP, that is His Excellency Bobby Wine, traveled to Geneva in Switzerland to attend the 2022 Geneva Summit for Human Rights and Democracy. Now the summit took place today and trust me, Uganda, we were very well represented. He was very smart for starters and his speech, oh my god, it was very powerful. And actually he started with a chorus of one of his songs that is, we are fighting for freedom and everyone was like, Oh my god, is this guy from Uganda? <laughs> Actually, everyone was so happy and they had to clap for him. Okay, having said that, let us watch Bobby Wine's speech in Geneva, but do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell for all the notifications. Thank you. My check, one, two. See, how our leaders become misleaders and see, how our mentors become tormentors. Freedom fighters became dictators. They're killing our people in Karamoja. We are fighting for freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my story, which also represents the story of very many Ugandans that have endured human rights violations for the last 36 years. I never intended to get into politics, and neither did I pay much attention to the political space until my, cons my personal consciousness was awakened rudely uh, by my personal humiliation at the hands of a security operative. I'm a musician, and in 2005, I was the hottest artist in town, singing about parties and girls and money. And so, like any other 23-year-old who is successful, I went out and bought a big fancy car, a Cadillac Escalade with spinning wheels and a personalized number plate, Ghetto. One day, I was at a nightclub in Kampala when a security operative pulled me out of my brand new car, slapped me in the face, and put a gun on my head. And he asked me, yo, why are you showing off? Don't you know that this country has owners? I drove away humiliated, and this horrible feeling was all over me, a feeling of you deserved it. Because he was right, I thought I was safe as a celebrity, partying with the rich and powerful military generals, whining and dining with them. But I did not know that it didn't change the reality. The reality that I was just a boy from the ghetto and that I would not be free from their oppressive rule until everyone in Uganda was free. That incident reminded me of the humiliation that many Ugandans faced every day. I couldn't forgive myself for having allowed my temporary and deceptive comfort and elevation from society to blind me from the plight of my fellow disadvantaged people. And I decided on that day that moving forward, I would be a voice of social justice. For 36 years, Uganda has been under the rule of General Yoweri Museveni. More than 85% of Ugandans have never seen another president in their lifetime. Not because the law allows it, no, but because he has always changed the constitution with the help of a compromised parliament, and he has always rigged elections with the help of a personalized military. But regardless of all this, the Western world continued to tolerate and enable General Museveni because he is considered a useful dictator, good for regional security and national stability, even if he bends a few rules. But that's not true. General Museveni rules Uganda with an iron hand. He deploys the military against the citizens and students. Those who oppose him are either put in prison, tortured, or killed. His administration ranks one of the most corrupt in the world. 
His family members and henchmen have plundered our nation at the expense of health care, education, and other social services. So, sitting there in my fancy car, beaten and humiliated, I knew I could not stay silent anymore. So, for the next 10 years, I dedicated my music to the plight of the common Ugandans and the fight for human rights. In 2016, General Museveni rigged the election and declared himself president again. And that's when I decided that if the parliament could not come to the ghetto, the ghetto would go to the parliament. In 2017, <laughs> thank you. In 2017, I decided to run for a parliamentary seat. Our constituency campaign turned into a national campaign and we won the seat with 80%. Then we started the People Power Movement to awaken a generation of young Ugandans, talking to them about democracy and explaining to them why they must get involved. This annoyed General Museveni, and from then we were branded as enemies. In 2018, while on a campaign trail in the northern Ugandan district of Arua, General Museveni decided that it was too much for him to take. He alleged that our supporters had stoned his motorcade and for that reason, the military was given orders to shoot and kill. I had just stepped out of my car when suddenly I heard gunshots. Blah, blah, blah. My driver and friend, Yasin Kauma, was shot dead in the car seat that I had been occupying just a few minutes earlier. I took a picture of him and tweeted it, him lying in a pool of blood. I tweeted it with the caption, Police has shot my driver dead, thinking they have shot at me. And then, the Special Forces Command, a section of the military that is led by General Museveni's son, Mohoz Kaneirugaba, started hunting for me. For the next eight hours, I hid in a random hotel room as they broke down every single door looking for me. Meanwhile, my tweet went viral, and suddenly, the entire world was watching Museveni. So when they finally found me, they did not kill me, but they tortured me to near death. I was detained in a military base for several days. Not even my family knew where I was. I later learned that people protested in very many parts of the world calling for my release. And for this, I'm forever grateful because if it was not for that pressure, I'm sure I would not be alive to talk to you today. In a military court, I was charged with the offense of annoying the president, treason, and illegal possession of firearms. They displayed two machine guns to prove that. And of course, these were trumped up charges. Out of shame, the firearms charges were later dropped and the guns disappeared. Two and a half years later, that case has not been heard. So, in 2019, I announced that I was running for president. Now, under General Museveni's Uganda, that means three things. It either means prison, or being forced into exile, or death. But we were ready for all that. And yes, that's exactly what happened. We endured the most horrifying campaign, the most violent campaign, the most brutal and murderous campaign you can ever imagine. In November 2020, I was arrested for allegedly violating COVID-19 regulations, a convenient excuse for Museveni to suppress his political opponents. Our supporters protested against my illegal detention and the military went on rampage. They shot and killed hundreds of people but of course, General Museveni came out and said that they killed only 54 protesters. Thousands were arrested, and instead of the accountability for the massacre, General Museveni came out and praised the military for a job well done. A few days later, my bodyguard and friend, Frank Senteza, was deliberately run over and killed by a military police car. Thousands of our supporters 
were then abducted by security operatives in unmarked vehicles called drones in Uganda. And as I speak to you right now, many are still missing, while others are still in illegal detention, simply for supporting me and our party. Those who were lucky to return, they came back with severe torture marks and horrifying stories, stories of eyes and fingernails plucked out, stories of men being castrated and women being raped in detention. But we never gave up, and we will never give up. It wasn't me challenging General Museveni. No, it was an entire generation. And for the first time, there were no tribal lines. There were no religious lines. There were no class lines. The entire population was speaking with one big voice. All our people were saying, people power is our power. It was the biggest public phenomenon that I had ever seen. Now, I had been a celebrity. I had done hit songs. I knew what it meant to be famous and having people chat your name wherever you go. But this was different. On election day, after casting my ballot, I went home only to find my house surrounded with hundreds of soldiers. And later I learned that the same was happening to all our party office offices across the country. The internet was switched off. Mainstream media was placed under strict censorship. Any radio station that dared to report on the election was immediately, immediately shut down. Radio presenters and journalists were arrested. And so in this complete blackout, General Museveni declared himself winner of the election again. International authorities challenged the results as fraudulent, not free, and not fair. But I remained under house arrest for the next 11 days. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not an exaggeration to say that my life is, danger, is in danger because I live in Uganda, and after here, I am going back to Uganda. I have lost friends and colleagues at the hands of security forces. I have been arrested and charged very, very many times, and my only crime has been challenging General Museveni's dictatorship. I am therefore here to tell the world with clarity that General Museveni is not the leader you think he is. He is a threat to the people of Uganda, and yes, is a threat to the entire region. The international community has already recognized that the 2021 election in Uganda was neither free nor fair. And it's important that these words are followed with firm actions. First, we call upon the world leaders to stop shaking General Museveni's blood-stained hands through funding and cooperation. Secondly, we call upon the governments and organizations all over the world to impose sanctions on him and the people that he uses to torture and kill innocent citizens. Thirdly, we call upon all those who value democracy and human rights and the rule of law to isolate General Museveni because he has distinguished himself as an excellent violator of human rights who has no respect whatsoever for human life and human dignity. And fourth, we ask you to support our demands for accountability for the crimes against humanity that he has committed and continues to commit against the people of Uganda. Now, for far too long, the Western world has believed that allowing dictators to hold their nations hostage is an unacceptable cost for perceived security. Leaders who tolerate dictators and treat them as legitimate partners are complicit in their crimes. Please do not be partners in crime. Do not sacrifice your moral obligation. Do not sacrifice your moral obligation for short time convenience. Please stand on the right side of history. I thank you.